This is lecture five of symmetries, particles and fields. And in this lecture, we will uh, derive the Lie algebra. Um, and we'll go on to look at the map between uh, an element of the Lie algebra and uh, an element of the group. five. So we made this statement last time um, about the vector space uh, spanned by the Lie algebra formed by linear combinations uh, of these TAs. And this is closed uh, if we take the Lie bracket for two of the vectors. So we end up back in the Lie algebra. So we're going to show this now. And in showing this, it will lead us to uh, derive the Lie algebra itself. So we first note um, that the following is true. Okay, so um, all, all I've done is written a particular combination of terms on the left hand side, and we turn this into the following. So um, we notice that, that this middle thing um, is how we define TB of Y. And then we have uh, the equation for DZR by DYS, which is lambda S A times mu a r of z. So I can uh, rewrite this. We remember that uh, the TBs are differential operators. So this TB will act um, with the chain rule on this square bracket. So this is equal to mu a s of y, TB of y, lambda s c of y. times mu c r of z plus lambda s c of y t b of y mu c r of z. Now, um, we proved last time that uh, TB of Y is the same as TB of Z. Okay, so we're going to switch that over in the next line. And I'm going to call this equation 2.5. All right. Now, um, to proceed, I need to know what the differential of an inverse matrix um, is. And because I need to know what uh, TB acting on lambda s, and remember lambda s is the inverse, the matrix inverse of mu. So for any matrix S, uh, X, the small, the differential of it, of the inverse of it is um, minus X inverse delta X, X to the minus one. Um, and TB, Y, acting on lambda of y. Um, well, we just write out tb in full. So this is mu b t uh, of y d by dy t lambda s y c y. So um, this is, so here we have the derivative of uh, the inverse matrix. And so we use the formula from just above. And so this is going to be minus lambda 
times TB acting on mu times lambda U C Y. So uh, we substitute this in uh, to 2.5. And then we get mu a s y mu b t y d two z r by d y s d y t is equal to minus mu a s y lambda s d y times t b mu d u y lambda u r y mu c r z plus T B of Z mu A R of Z. So this is equal to minus, uh, all right, so this first combination here, that's just uh, the, the products of the matrix with this inverse. And so the result is the identity matrix. Uh, and so using that, we have minus T B mu A U of Y, Lambda U D of Y mu D R of Z plus T B Z mu A R of Z. Okay, so this implies that um, mu A S of Y mu B T of Y D two Z by dy s dy t lambda r c of z is equal to minus t b of y. So all I'm doing is um, multiplying the previous equation by this lambda um, r c. t b of y mu a r of y lambda r c of y plus t b of z mu a r of z, lambda r c of z. Okay, now um, we have, if we look at this left-hand side, um, everything's smooth. So we, and we have d2 z by dy s dy t. Um, so this is the same thing as d2, I should, this should be a z r actually. Um, D2ZR by DYT DYS. Okay, so the order uh, of the derivatives doesn't matter on this smooth uh, function. So what this means is that um, the left hand side is symmetric under uh, A go going to B. This means that the right-hand side is also symmetric um, under the same thing. So therefore, the anti-symmetric piece of the right-hand side is zero. So using this, we derive the following equation in one extra line. All I've done is I've collected um, the terms in uh, Y on the left and the ones in X on the right hand side. Um, okay, so what we have here is um, a differential equation. Um, each side involves some derivatives. Uh, but the thing on the left hand side is only a function of Y and the thing on the right hand side is only a function of Z. So we um, use the separation of variables method um, and so each side, the only way that that can be true is if, is if each side is equal to a constant.
And we're going to call this constant FCAB. Um, they're called the structure constants of the group or of the Lie algebra, actually. So I define, um, okay, so we've, so in other words, we've defined FCAB is equal to TAY mu BRY minus TBY mu ARY. Lambda R C of Y. Um, okay, so we can immediately see from this equation that um, this is anti-symmetric in uh, switching A and B. So these structure constants are uh, constant over all of the group because using our g of x um, in, in, as we did initially, that can move us to anywhere in the group. Um, okay. All right, so our de this definition of FCAB uh, means that we have the following. Um, that uh, TA of some point Z mu uh, BR of Z minus TB of Z mu AR of Z is FCAB. So all I've done is multiplied by uh, mu CR of Z here yeah. um, and uh, use the fact that lambda is the matrix inverse of mu. So um, we multiply this last equation by uh, d by dzr on right hand side. We act on d by dzr on the right hand side to derive the following that the commutator of TATB is equal to FCABTC. Now, this is an important equation. In fact, this, uh, this is often referred to as the Lie algebra. So all we have to do is uh, multiply this equation by um, XAYB, and we found what the, these coordinates ZC in terms of the XA's and the YB's were, um, and we get that it's F, C, A, B, X, A, Y, B. Um, so this initial aim of finding out what these coordinates Z were from the initial ones um, we found, and, they, and it's, they're determined in, by combinations that are given by these structure constants. All right, so um, it's time to look at some examples of structure constants. Um, but let me just first say uh, that the Jacobi identity becomes so the Jacobi identity can be written like this: T A T B T C plus T C T A T B plus TB, TC, TA is zero. Um, so in terms of the structure constants themselves, we can use the Lie algebra uh, twice in, in this equation to derive a relation between them.
So that's what the Jacobi identity looks like in terms of the structure constants. All right, so let's um, have a look at some examples. Uh, let's go to, back to good old SU2. So Lie algebra of SU2. So these are, remember, two by two traceless Hermitian, uh, sorry, anti Hermitian matrices. Uh, and the Pauli matrices pro provide a basis, actually. So we have three Pauli matrices, they're two by two matrices. I'm sure, you've seen them before. So these provide an anti Hermitian basis. Um, by forming, we form minus i uh, times sigma a over two is the convention, and that's an anti-Hermitian basis for our Lie algebra of SU2. Um, now, there's a relation uh, that the Pauli matrices satisfy, and in one of the exercises in the book, you'll be asked to prove this. So this is handy. Um, so this relation is ship uh, is quite handy to know. Um, but you can do it, you can calculate this uh, or check that they satisfy this basically. Um, but it, this implies that if our TA TB commutator now is actually minus one quarter sigma A commutated with sigma B, which is minus I over two. Um, so this first term, uh, the delta AB, uh, gets uh, cancelled in the commutator, and we just end up with um, twice the second term, sort of divided by minus four, four. So this is minus I over two, epsilon ABC, sigma C, okay, which is um, epsilon ABC TC. <clears throat> so here we have our structure constants. If we compare this to the Lie algebra, we see that the structure constants uh, are epsilon ABC. So uh, we've identified explicitly what our FC ABC, uh, sorry, our FC AB is. Okay, let's do another example. Example two, let's work out the Lie algebra of SO3. So these are three by three anti-symmetric real matrices and our basis um, is the following Uh, we can summarize this by saying that the BC component of TA um, is minus epsilon ABC. Okay, and you can check for yourselves, it takes a line, that the this means that the commutator of A and B um, gives you epsilon ABC TC. Um, so this is odd because um, we, what we see is that the Lie algebra of SO3 is the same as the Lie algebra uh, of SU2. The structure constants are the same. So what we say is that the Lie algebras are isomorphic. which we write with the usual isomorphism symbol. Um, if there exists 
I want a by objective map. F such that F X Y is F X. So it preserves the lead bracket structure basically. Um, so, okay. I should tell you here that um, there are different conventions for these um, basis vectors, but, sorry, these basis elements of the Lie algebra, these TAs. Um, and there's two sorts of common ones. We've been using the maths conventions, uh, but so these are the ones we're using. Um, but it's worth knowing that there are physics conventions too. So in the mass convention, these basis vectors of the Lie algebra are TAs. So I'm going to write them as cap normally they're written as capital T's. And the Lie algebra, as we've seen, is like this. We'll show in a minute um, that this exponential map gets you from the Lie algebra to the group G. And uh, we have that the TAs are anti-emission. Now, in the physics conventions, I'm going to write them with a small t just to discriminate from the maths conventions. So in, we have basically a factor of i <laughs> different So um, what this means is that now you get a factor of i in the Lie algebra. Um, and this element of the group has a, has a factor of i, of course, as well. Um, and actually, so this is a Hermitian basis. Um, so typically, uh, other people, when they're using physics conventions, they, they'll use the capital T, A, uh, A for the basis vectors. So you need to get used to either, it's not, it's not too bad. If you want to know the real definition of pain, try working in different metrics, opposite sign metrics, uh, when you're dealing with fermions in supersymmetry, for instance. This is nowhere near as bad as that. You just got to keep it consistent, it's fine. But you should note that if, if we rescale uh, that generate these TAs, uh, or we reorder them, uh, or otherwise take a, a different basis, you will get you will get uh, different FCABs. Um, and in fact, there there are different conventions, even within the physics uh, within this right hand column, for for example, um, what the uh, the overall scaling of the TAs is. All right, so now uh, I've mentioned this exponential map here, and I want to go on to uh, develop that further. And so we're going to now discuss the Lie algebra Lie group relationship. So let's take um, some element theta a, t a, which is in the Lie algebra. Um, so there's a one parameter subgroup of this uh, of this group corresponding to a path whose tangent at the identity is theta a t a. This corresponding to a path whose tangent at the identity is theta a t a. So the path um, with coordinates x r is uh, parameterized by a single parameter s. 
So um, we write x r of s. Okay, so we have that um, the check we have from previous work that the change in this parameter is theta a mu a r x s. So this I'm going to call equation 2.6, um, but we have that x r um, at s equal to zero. Well, we're going to set that to be correspond to the identity. So those coordinates, remember the identity um, was zero uh, at the origin. Okay, so what this means is if we consider a group element uh, and with the derivative the derivative of the group element uh, along this path. Well, we can just use the chain rule rule here. Okay, so this thing um, is equal to, well, we just substitute in from 2.6, um, and so we have theta a mu a r of x s d by d x r g x s. Okay, so um, this is just theta a t a acting on G. So now we have a differential equation. This equation 2.7 is a differential equation for G, which we'll solve in a second. Uh, but we must um, see that it, we must check that it forms a subgroup. So let's consider some g of z, which is uh, g of x t of g of, so we have the groups, two group elements where we have different parameters. And remember that um, zr is this function phi r of x t x s. So um, dzr by ds is dx u of s by ds times dzr by dx u of s. So this is equal to theta a mu a u of x of s. Um, times lambda u b of x s mu b r of z. Okay, so um, again, this is just delta a b in the middle. And so this thing, oops. Excuse me, hit the wrong button. So this thing is equal to um, theta a mu a of z. So this is just like um, 2.6, but with z r um, at evaluated at s equal to zero is going to be x r of t. So the solution is uh, 
Uh, sorry, that should be Z. The solution is ZR is uh, XDR evaluated at um, SS plus T. And so rewriting, we have rewriting the initial um, equation, which was this one. We have G of A S plus T. Sorry, X should be X of S plus T. Um, and so this means the subgroup closes. Um, and we can see that the ordering of um, S and T doesn't matter because S plus T is a symmetric function of S and T. Uh, so it's abelian. Um, and we also have that the inverse operator uh, is just where you have a minus s on the left hand side. So t equal to minus s. So in other words, g of um, x of s to minus 1 is g of x of minus s. All right, good. So um, it's got all these properties, uh, but we can just go back to 2.7 now and just solve the differential equation. So G of X of S is the exponential of S theta A T A. So theta A T A is an element of the Lie algebra. And so any element of the Lie algebra um, we can go to an element of the group, for example, for S equal to one. So we should note that the, in general, the image um, of the, this exponential uh, isn't always the whole group, um, but it's actually the part connected to the identity. So just to, rem to uh, remind you about O3, remember that um, we have this ball with antipodal points identified. And um, we have the e to the theta a t a. This goes right through the identity at the origin. Um, but these, but the, but these are the um, proper rotations. These have determinant of the matrix is equal to plus one. Um, but O three is these ones with the union of these ones with the det m is minus one improper rotations. So these involve a reflection as well. And these are not continuously connected to the identity. And so these two pieces are disconnected. So the exponential only, take, only gives you these first ones. So you can't uh, express improper rotations as. Um, e to the x with a real anti-symmetric x. 
Okay. All right, so um, we're talking about matrix groups primarily. Uh, and so if theta TA, theta A TA are matrices, we need to define the exponential of a matrix. So um, many of you may have seen this before but it's, we define it by the Taylor series of X that you would normally get uh, for the exponential. Notice that this converges for all S. Um, we're gonna need to multiply, uh, we, well, we're gonna need to know what the exponential of SM plus TM is. So using our definition of the exponential of a matrix, we have the following. Um, so we, we can binomially expand uh, this bracket within. So we get the binomial coefficients okay so now i substitute in for the binomial coefficients factor of n factorial cancels between the top and the bottom um, and okay so i've i've written the um the term I've, I've pulled out this factor of m to the n minus k out of the front um because this is going to allow us to rewrite uh, this this sum in the following way so i'm going to use change variables called n prime is equal to n minus k this goes from zero uh, to infinity. Okay, the way that we can see um, that that's the correct thing to do, <laughs> um, you have to consider the range of summation or the, the domain actually of the summation. So we have some summation domain like this. Uh, and n minus k is in that is in the direction towards the top right. Okay, good. All right. Um, I'm sorry. Beg your pardon. This is equal to exponential of T m exponential S m. Okay, so we see that. Um, we get the usual relationship um, that we're used to just with exponentials of numbers um, when, when we have the exponential of identical matrices summed together. All right. Um, what about products of group elements? This leads us on to the next topic which is a formula called the Baker-Campbell Hausdorff formula. So that's a bit of a mouthful, so we'll call it the BCH formula. Baker was here in Cambridge in 1887. Um, he 
came top of the mass tripos. So um, we can express group elements as exponential to the x, where x is in the Lie algebra of the group. But what about products? <clears throat> OK, so um, there's actually one of the exercises uh, asks that you verify the following formula. This is the BCH formula. So we have two different uh, two different elements of the Lie algebra x and y, and we get the term that we would suspect uh, for the first uh, term in the exponential, and then we get something with the Lie bracket for the second term. And you get nested brackets for the higher order terms. So this is the BCH formula. Uh, so it does extend to all orders, uh, but it's tricky to prove um, in general. You can look it up on Wikipedia if you're interested. Uh, we're only going to need um, this level of expansion. Um, you, we'll, you'll be asked in the exercise to verify this. Um, up to, oh well, up to the order that I've written. So um, near the identity, um, if we consider a commutator actually of uh, these two group elements, what we end up with is that the linear term cancels and um, it's this Lie bracket that will determine the group structure near the identity. OK, this is one uh, more topic that I want to cover in this lecture, um, and that's on orbits, and it's related to um, these one parameter subgroups. So um, in fact, one parameter subgroups are examples of orbits. So these are defined for general groups which act uh, on some space. So this space for us will be the representation space. We'll, we'll meet that uh, soon. So the orbit uh, of some point x, which is called O sub, sub, suffix x, this is the set of points in big X uh, obtained by the action of some group element. Well, actually, any group element on the point. In other words, OX is the set of all points X prime such that X prime is GX. So the orbit stabilizer theorem, which we're not going to prove. states um, that the orbit is a coset of G with GX, where GX is the stabilizer group. Sometimes called the stabilizer group, sometimes called the little, little group.
and that's defined as following. So it's the set uh, of all elements H in the group, where, which leave the point alone. So the proof is outside um, this course, but let's just take an example uh, of this. This is something we'll need for later for one of the applications. So let's take some points in three-dimensional space, zero, zero, one, uh, and consider the O3, the orthogonal group. Um, so, so I've chosen this in the, in the Z direction, or, the x3 direction, let's say. So we have x2, x1, and x3. So O3 is this group of uh, rotations and reflections. Well, actually, so if I just do rotation, so it's SO3, it's this um, sphere here, this two dimensional sphere. Uh, okay, so A is the point here. All right, um, and OA is in the X, X uh, two, X three plane. So it's the point on this group manifold in that plane. What's the, it's the, so it's a circle. In other words, OA is O3 over O2. So the fact is that the transformations which leave this point invariant are the rotations around the, you know, the X3 axis. Uh, and so in terms of um, the orthogonal group, rather than SO, the special orthogonal group, that's uh, O2. So this is isomorphic to uh, a circle. So for X prime in OX, GX prime is isomorphic to GX since the elements that leave the point invariant and X prime is GX. This implies that H prime to X prime is X prime for H prime is GH, G to the minus one. Okay, good. All right, so next time we'll just uh, finish off this chapter with um, talking about symmetries in quantum mechanics and just trying to relate um, these things to bras and kets and, and things that we objects that we're used to in, in quantum mechanics. And then we'll go on to the topic, important topic of representations of groups in the algebras.